Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Monday, May 14. After three sittings of the Upper House, the new road traffic bill was passed with 161 amendments on Friday. The bill, which was approved by the Lower House with 131 amendments on February 6, seeks to repeal and replace the existing 1938 Act. The bill will establish new offenses as well as provide increased penalties for breaches. The new road traffic bill will be sent to the House of Representatives for approval, after which, if there are no changes, it will be accepted by the Governor General, gazetted and passed into law. Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, who piloted the bill through the Senate, thanked both sides of the House for their constructive contribution to the process of modernizing the legislation, which has taken almost 20 years. It's our deepest and most sincere thanks to the technical team, to, from, from the Attorney General's Chambers, from Parliamentary Council, from the Ministry of Transport, from the Road Safety Council, and uh, uh, all the stakeholders. She noted that the updated bill is now suited to the current realities on the roads, particularly in relation to the high number of fatalities due to road crashes. Among the features of the new Road Traffic Act are restrictions on handheld devices and a requirement for drivers to have a license in their possession while operating a vehicle. Also, no grace period is allowed to produce a permit or driver's license if it is found that the motorist does not have this document on his or her person. Some of the offenses for which heavy fines will be imposed under the bill include driving without the required motor vehicle insurance coverage for which the fine is $20,000. Driving a motor vehicle without being the holder of a permit or driver's license is now $40,000 and the failure of a driver to obey a traffic light is $24,000. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang says government is moving to adequately equip members of the police force to effectively respond to crime and violence. Minister Chang says his ministry has been mandated to urgently complete the acquisition of information communication technology, ICT solutions and applications. Modern developments in technology, forensic science and intelligence gathering must become part and parcel of policing in this country and afford for the young men who join a professional pathway. Acquisition of industry specific 21st century equipment is a priority of the ministry. We intend to increase the efficiency of the JCF by providing the appropriate tools to create a more comfortable and customer focused force, but one that can deal with the challenges of the 21st century as criminals move in every way to undermine the states and in fact damage the police force. The National Security Minister was speaking at the passing out parade for 195 new constables at Harmon Barracks on Friday. Minister Chang says the Jamaica Constabulary Force intends to recruit and train over 1,000 new police personnel this year as part of efforts to increase the number of officers engaged in the field. Still on security, Portfolio Minister Dr. Horace Chang has reiterated government's commitment to supporting the police force in restoring public order through the provision of the necessary human resources, technology and infrastructure needed to effectively execute their duties. The Ministry is committed to providing the Commissioner and his team and the police force with equipment and the political support required to ensure that they can maintain good order in developing the by the community and society. This, the minister says, will not only re-establish credibility in the force, but also create the environment in which the National Development Plan Vision 2030 Jamaica can be realized. Minister Chang made the pledge Tuesday at the Lasco Jamaica Constabulary Force Police Officer of the Year Awards. Constable Davian Martin was named the 2018-2019 winner. He beat eight other officers to cop top honors at the awards, which is in its 18th year. During his tenure at the Mandeville Police Station, the constable moved the youth club membership to 80 and donated the proceeds of a 5K run walk to initiate an annual Feed the Street People program. The Jamaica Tourist Board, JTB, is aiming to engage potential visitors through the use of social media. The JTB has launched the Join Me in Jamaica digital marketing campaign. The campaign features a series of 90-second videos showcasing local Jamaican celebrities and personalities sharing unique stories of their love for the country. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says to achieve growth in tourist arrivals, technology must be incorporated in marketing plans. These videos will now populate our space, our social space, and we'll be able to have connectivity to every corner of the world. 
And the language part of it, yes, we've worked on. And the technology allows instant translation. So utilizing technology now is to define the new path. The videos are being promoted via the JTB's social media channels. During the first phase of the campaign, a total of eight videos were produced, highlighting the country's music, cuisine, and attractions. And finally, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, has launched its Pediatric Pulse booklets. The booklet speaks to treatment and care of various common illnesses, such as vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, fever, coughing, and wheezing. While speaking at the launch recently, Chief Executive Officer of the CPFSA, Rosalie Gage Gray, says the booklet is a resource guide for medical practitioners, caregivers, and the wider society. This is indeed very timely, as it will provide practitioners with critical information as to how to react and mitigate specific illnesses, as well as give general tips to promote good pediatric health. The 23-page Pediatric Pulse was compiled by a case review panel which consists of pediatric practitioners, psychologists, psychiatrists and representatives from the Health Ministry and the CPFSA. They examine the critical incidents involving hospitalization and deaths and they make determination as to whether all reasonable actions have been taken to investigate and report the circumstances of the incidents to the relevant and appropriate authorities. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.